Hi, I'm Jane Greenberg, former district director for physical education and health literacy, a contract employee for U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C., and for the last seven years, the North American chair for the International Sport and Culture Association. And I'm Nicole Barda, associate professor in the kinesiology and sport management program at Gonzaga University. I am a certified strength and conditioning specialist and an AC ACSM certified personal trainer. So today we're going to talk about what is fitness education, and it is a component of a comprehensive physical education program. So you can see that it's just one piece that students would get uh, within their experience. So sport education, outdoor education, dance education, aquatics could all be other components of physical education, but fitness education specifically focuses on teaching students how and why to achieve and maintain good health related physical fitness. So characteristics of fitness education include that students will learn a conceptual understanding of health related fitness, and this includes cognitive components such as how and why they need to assess their personal fitness, design a personalized fitness program, and to monitor uh, their level of health-related fitness. In addition, it provides opportunities for students to engage in lifetime physical activity during class time. So it's an opportunity for them to be able to get at least um, some time related to their 60 minutes of physical activity each day. And it also helps them to develop self-management skills such as stress management uh, to help them be able to maintain healthy behaviors. So below is a list of things that students will learn in fitness education. And this includes uh, the value of it. So why they would want uh, to be able to maintain physical activity, the benefits of it, um, how to perform a variety of uh, physical activities, such as techniques related to resistance training, cardiovascular exercises, um, how to design their own personal fitness plan using training principles and fitness assessment, specifically setting goals for themselves, and then also how to plan and maintain a healthy diet, and then making good decisions related to consumer products, and then how to employ effective self-management skills that'll help them overcome barriers to maintaining healthy physical activity. So why fitness education? And first of all, there really is a need to improve physical activity habits and health-related physical fitness of youth and adults. So in the US, about 50% of adults do not get enough aerobic physical activity and this particularly relates to risks associated with cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and cancer. In addition, 77% of high school students do not get enough aerobic physical activity. And overall, uh, sedentary behaviors really contribute to about $117 billion in annual health care costs. So there is evidence to show that fitness education works to promote lifelong physical activity habits that can contribute to lowering healthcare costs and improving the overall health and wellness of both youth and adults. So one piece of evidence comes from a 20 year longitudinal study on the effectiveness of fitness education. And this study found that adults who participated in a year long fitness education course were significantly more likely to engage in physical activity as adults than those who did not take a year long fitness education course. So you can see in the table here uh, that those who gained health related fitness knowledge uh, by participating in a fitness education course were a lot more likely to engage in moderate to fit in vigorous physical activity. In addition, fitness education is important because it prepares students to be college or career ready. So nearly every school district in the nation has a goal of preparing students to be college or career ready. And fitness education is an important piece of this because it helps to improve brain functioning and cognitive performance. Uh, in addition, it teaches students to employ self-management strategies, such as reducing stress, ensuring they get adequate sleep, 
and meeting nutritional needs that can enhance energy. Uh, physical fitness can also improve their occupational productivity and their options for occupations. Um, several careers require professionals to meet minimal physical fit standards, such as the military, firefighting, and police. And in addition, workers that engage in more moderate to vigorous physical activity um, use significantly less sick leave. So in addition to not only uh, being healthy, but you're going to be uh, more productive at whatever career that you choose to engage in. So everyone really should be an advocate for fitness education. It's some, it is a component of physical education that promotes inclusion and can provide all students the opportunity to learn how to improve their lives through physical activity and health-related fitness. So it has been found that individuals with disabilities are four times more likely to develop health-related conditions such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, due to a lack of physical activity. So students with disabilities especially need high quality fitness education because it can help to enhance their ability to function independently and reduce the risk for obesity and other chronic diseases. When you want to implement a fitness education, uh, there are a number of different ways that you can go about it. So there's not one right way, and it really depends upon your setting, such as how much time that you have, your access to resources, such as the equipment, the space, uh, the instructional materials, how old your students are, how many days per week you'll have class. So all those can be taken into consideration uh, to determine what implementation you want to use. These are just a few examples of how you could uh, start using fitness education. So there could be a full course that's focused on multiple education objectives, such as a lifetime fitness course at the high school level. It could be a multiple week unit on uh, a few selected fitness education objectives. So that might occur at the middle school where it's a unit that is taught for multiple weeks over the year. You could use a multi uh, model approach so that you're integrating fitness education with another model, uh, such as the sport education or an outdoor education model, so that you're teaching selected fitness concepts in each class session alongside the other concepts in the course. So what we decided to do when writing this book is provide a resource manual for all physical education teachers at the secondary school level, as well as for college age students, especially those pre-service teachers that are doing their student teachers and student teaching in the schools. Because what we found out is fitness education is often overlooked for various reasons. No equipment, no weight room, large class size, or lack of professional development. And what this book offers is practical guidelines and guidance for implementing fitness education programming. And we wanted, and we did it to meet the needs of all students. So it is a full inclusion book. And, and at first we do wanna also thank the Spokane Special Olympics, as well as the Spokane Parasport Centers for their participants that serve as models and doing many of the exercises in the book. And we wanna address the following priorities within a fitness education course. Aside from just the activities, which include social emotional learning, behavior modification principles, and adherence to fitness activities, social cognitive theory, classroom management, student safety, equity, diversity, inclusion, and social justice, to name such, just a few. So we put it together in three very distinct parts. And the first part represents both theoretical and practical knowledge of fitness education. And what's really important is that we stress that this is a standards-based curriculum. It's pedagogical and content knowledge considerations. It includes nutrition, wellness, and consumer issues, and the general components of fitness education. When we transition into the second part of the book, it actually focuses on the activities of flexibility, strength, and cardiorespiratory fitness. And we have full videos and photos that show the stretching, the multiple strength, up and endurance, upper body, core, and lower body exercises. And in part three, we guide the readers, enabling students to participate in community fitness and activity events to support the development of lifelong fitness habits, 
which also supports the CSPAP Comprehensive School Physical Activity Program. So what do we have in the book that would be of interest? And of course the hard copy or ebook version has so much information, but the ancillary materials are extremely important to implement the fitness course. And we did it for you. We, we wanted this to be an out of the box course. So we have 211 instructional photos showing exercises and stretching that requires absolutely no equipment and are easily adapted for varying abilities. The 18 pacing guides that I'll talk about in a little bit have a week by week blueprint for implementing a semester long fitness education course. We have a full chapter on nutrition education that we're proud to say we brought in an internationally recognized sports nutritionist to help with various components of nutrition for both physical activity and sport engagement. There are 63 handouts to distribute to the students throughout the course and the robust online resources have not only the 18 pacing guides, but 139 video demonstration of all the exercises that are in the book. We have PowerPoint presentations for the instructor to show in physical education classes with video demonstrations embedded into the PowerPoints and teacher aids and student handouts, including assignments, assessments, posters, and a 12 week personal fitness plan. So let's take a close look at just a sampling of what the activities are that you'll get. And this will include a fitness book pacing guide for just week three. And remember we have 18 weeks worth. And the reason that we find pacing guides are so important is especially in a in large urban school district, when there's a large mobility rate, what we wanna make sure is that when one student transfers to a school from one school to another, they're no more than a couple of days behind what they would do in the required course. The PowerPoint chapter presentation that we chose was just a sampling of chapter 12 for upper body muscular strength and endurance. Uh, there's a fitness class journal to show that journaling is important for the social and emotional well being of students in the class to see how they, they themselves feel and how they're progressing. A personalized fitness plan. And of the 18 pages, we're just going to show you a few sample pages and a physical activity log that can also be used for home uh, homework and parent involvement with the student's progress. So the pacing guides really offer several different objectives. They have classroom discussion topics, assessments, teaching strategies for each week and teaching tips. And they're all aligned with the Shape America's national standards and grade level outcomes for K-12 physical education. So this is a sample pacing guide. Most of the weeks, all 18 weeks have two pages, but they all follow the same format. Um, to the first um, diagram on the left, the headings are uh, topics or chapters the standards and grade level outcomes for both middle school and senior high school, the objectives of the lesson, classroom discussion topics, which include which chapters should be used during that particular week. On the second page, it has the specific activities, various assessments, teaching strategies and tips, and instructional tools, vocabulary and web resources. So not only can you develop your own assessments, but if you need additional extension of supporting documentation, it directs you to not only the web resources for the book on the HK Propel, but also to the web resources that are on the World Wide Web to support your instruction. So the sample PowerPoint for each chapter, what I chose was the chapter 12 part two. And what's important is that we recognize that many of the schools may not have the capacity for the teachers to load the full chapter PowerPoint. So we divided it into two parts, but each part is starts with the same way. We have lesson objectives. We show the muscular, the muscle that are used in that particular exercise. So for this one, for example, chapter 12, we're looking at the upper body muscular strength and endurance exercises. 
So the lesson objectives and the anatomical diagram of which muscles will be targeted for these particular exercises are shown for each of the PowerPoints. Then we take throughout and we show the actual exercise, which coincides with the figure that's in the hard copy book. And then we have the demonstrations, which do a step-by-step -step on how to do the, the actual exercise. So as we move into the next slide, we'll see that there's the demonstration. We'll let this run through. And each demonstration is only 10 seconds long. So it's during your PowerPoint presentation as you're presenting to the students that they can actually see what the exercise looks like before they actually go into the gym or outside area to conduct the exercise. And as the PowerPoint concludes, we also provide a lesson review and then the lesson review answers to help both you and the students and again, these are only examples and you can provide your own because the not only does the book, hard copy book have examples of the uh, PowerPoint, but you can modify these to meet what you need to teach. Also, as discussed, we have a fitness journal and we think journaling is really important as some kids enjoy fitness education. Some kids also struggle a little bit with fitness education. But this gives them an opportunity to put what they feel, how they're feeling, what impact the class has on them, what are their positive and negative feelings. And this can be shared with the teacher or it can be part of their portfolio, which would get graded. So in a fitness education class, we want to make sure that the actual fitness assessment is not used for grading students and it's not used for teacher evaluation. So we provide other assessment ideas that can help you grade the student on their journey through fitness. We also include a very comprehensive fitness education plan for weeks one through six and then weeks seven through 12. And each of the fitness plans actually are 18 pages in length. So, and you can print it out, you can do it online with the students and this also becomes part of their portfolio. So the first page always covers what is the individual personal fitness plan. Um, next page is just a sample of personal fitness component evaluation. And this is where the student will keep track of what their actual assessment was on fitness assessments. And it talks about SMART goals and what the students need to do to set their own fitness goals. And it continues with directions on how to complete it, incorporating principles of fitness training, and then the student's actual personal fitness plan. And we have a week one all the way through week, week six and seven for this particular one, or week seven through 12 for the second one, depending on whether it's a semester long class or a, a, um, an inclusion into other um, physical education classes. And then we also want to make sure that the students are monitoring along with the teacher. So this can be done individually, this can be turned in, and it's determining whether the student felt that they met their personal fitness goals or what they need to do for the following week if they have not. And another example is just a very simple physical activity log where this can be done as homework, this can be done of what students can do with their parents or siblings on the weekends, where they put in their type of activity, the goal, the minutes of activity or the number of steps, individual notes. And this is actually that the student can use, you can have the parents sign off on it if it is a homework assignment. And the student can also write down what changes they'll make for the following week. So again, these are just some examples of the 63 handouts that we have as part of the ancillaries. So as we move forward, we want to encourage you to incorporate either a fitness education course or fitness education into your physical education courses in general, and not to shy away from it, but just to make sure that you're using fitness education 
that's appropriate for the students. And it's not, again, I can't reiterate enough, not used to grade students. So we wanna thank you um, for the opportunity to present to you. And we encourage you to look on human kinetics and take a look, a deeper look inside the book. And hopefully you'll find it useful again for K, uh, secondary school physical education teachers, as well as undergraduate students, in particular those preparing to do their student teaching.